Hello everybody, welcome back to Firefield Junction and welcome back to another review for you. Apologies that it's been a little while since I've uploaded a video, or I've at least uploaded one properly. I've just been very busy with uh, just other stuff, life in general. I just haven't really had an awful lot of time uh, to film any new videos. Um, but we're finally back, uh, got another loco finally once again for us. So hopefully I can uh, find, uh, get back into making some more videos now and uh, start uh, making up for not being around for a little bit. Um, but what we've got today, well, as we can see, it's by Batman. Um, fairly old model, as we can tell, certainly looking at the packaging. Uh, certainly been going quite a while, this one, and been uh, looks like it's been... Um, it's had uh, quite an interesting previous life. Um, but as we can see, if you haven't already been able to tell, it's a Class 46 and that we've got for it today. Um, I'm sure you probably know that. Um, in fact, you will know that because it's in the title, so you'll know what we're looking at today. Um, but yes, it's a Class 46 that we've got for us, a uh, Batman one, again, uh, quite an old one, um, well, basically the first one, I suppose, they really did. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure Batman still do the 46 today. I'm not sure when they last retooled it, um, but I'm sure it will be um, a lot more modern uh, than the version that we've got here. Um, but I'm sure that hopefully um, this one will still be good enough for us. Hopefully we'll still be able to enjoy it. Um, if we look at, look at the end of the box quickly, we'll see which one we've got. So this one is 32-700, uh, it's a Class 46, a uh, diesel, D163, uh, Leicester, uh, Leicestershire and uh, Derbyshire Yeomanry. It was quite an interesting name. Uh, the only name, um, in fact, um, this was the only ever uh, Class 46 that was named out of the 56 that were built. Um, because, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's how many were built, only 56 of them between 1961 and 1963. Um, all of them were built at Derby. This was the only one that ever got a name, uh, which is quite interesting, obviously, normally with locos, and I'm sure we're used to it, um, a lot of other locos, so you get quite a lot, quite a few of them that are named. Uh, but uh, unlike, uh, unlike that, well, basically unlike all the others, this was the only uh, Class 46 that was ever named. Um, and whilst this particular loco um, is not with us anymore, the nameplate is because one of the preserved Class 45s, um, I think it's 45125 uh, is the one, that uh, particular loco now carries this nameplate and preservation, which is quite good. So not all bad, I suppose, even though the loco isn't here with us anymore. Um, the nameplate certainly is. Um, apologies if you can hear sort of that noise in the background. That's the heater. I don't know why it's doing that, um, but I'll keep that out of the way. Um, so, yeah, now it's a shame that obviously this loco isn't around anymore, but um, we still have three of them. Um, three, class four, three Class 46s have been preserved, so which is nice. So at least if we want to go and see one, uh, we can go and do that. It's obviously not all. <laughs> we haven't, out of all the locos that have existed, um, we not all of them um, managed to survive. Um, not even one of them left. So at least we've got a few left, which is cool. Um, now this particular model, I'm not entirely sure when this one came out. Um, obviously, it's going to be quite old, um, but it will say on the box. I'm pretty sure if we can try it, we'll see if we can have a look with it. Usually on the end of the flap, not that end. So I'm guessing on the other end, so I'll try and see quickly when this particular model came out. Um, but I'm guessing it'll be like the early 2000s. Uh, there we go. So 2004, um, it came out March the 8th um, was this particular one. So yeah, basically when I thought a um, lot of, sort of Batman models from around this time are sort of the early 2000s. Uh, but again, uh, since then, um, obviously I'm sure Batman would have at some point retooled this, um, probably added uh, more modern features and basically obviously made it better than the, well, this, the, the, this version. Um, and I've had it for a little while. I got it back in, when did I get it? I think it was back in February I picked this one up um, at the um, Portsmouth Royal Railway show when I was down there um, exhibiting a layout, um, looking around the stands, and this caught my eye. Um, and I wasn't looking at getting a peak originally, but the price was one of the main things I think drew me to this one because I only paid £54 for this loco. I mean, can you believe that? Big uh, diesel loco, um, fairly modern-ish, I suppose, uh, fairly decent, and only 54 quid. Can't really go go wrong there, can you? I think, and it was practically immaculate as well. I mean, I barely needed to do much to it when I got it back as well. I mean, it ran really, really well um, when I first uh, tested it. Um, so definitely got a, a major, major bargain there, which is good. Um, and it's obviously nice to get a bargain because certainly with today's prices, um, it's always nice to get uh, a decent value, a decent value model. Uh, certainly on the second hand market as well, or well, even brand new, I suppose as well. Um, but yeah, certainly can't complain about the price. So enough rambling, let's get her open and we'll have a quick look at her. Um, she has been shipped uh, since I got her. I was going to look at, look at her um, earlier on, like literally not long after I got her. Um, but unfortunately that ended up falling through. So, well, we're here now. We're here in May, several months after I got it. 
and then finally uh, managed to get around looking at it. Um, so we are going to be running here on DCC, but I can assure you that on DCC or analog, um, these do run very, very well. So and we should be fine there. So I've put a look at paperwork first. So that's just the collector's club, not really interested in that. Then we've got, so uh, this is just the guarantee, which is pretty boring. So we won't bother with that either, I think. And we'll have a quick look through the actual instructions, but because obviously these can be quite important. Um, but we won't look at them for too long, so it's not, again, not incredibly interesting. So you can see there, so class 45 slash, uh, slash class 46 uh, diesel locomotive. And so obviously the 45s and the 46s and even the 44s, um, they were all nicknamed Peaks. So they all did uh, share quite a few similarities, uh, especially like in how they looked. And obviously Batman, obviously when they did this, um, with the amount of similarities that these that the tooling shared, and they've obviously got the same instructions. But we can see there, it outlines everything that we need to know. So we can see all the parts there, so chassis block, circuit board, and the motor, typical uh, Batman motor there. So nice big one, two flywheels, and that drives um, not all of the wheels. Um, it's just two axles per bogey. So it's four axle driven, so eight wheel drive if you like. Um, so that means one axle, um, of, well, so if one of the main axles, if you like, on each bogey is not driven. Um, but again, that is pretty typical of, of uh, Backman locos around this time. Um, a lot of them were like that. Then we've obviously got the, um, sort of, oh, so they've also got the, like, the dummy axle, um, if you like, at each end as well. Um, so these are one Coco one um, wheel arrangements. So the um, axle at the very end of each bogey, just sort of there to help it guide it over, I suppose, points and loading, load gauging and sort of stuff like that to distribute the weight. Uh, but yeah, not too bad. So should you need to replace any parts, then you've got the part numbers there. So should you need to do it, so it should be quite easy to do. Um, obviously, it's not very um, often that you need to replace parts, but uh, it does happen. Uh, I've asked it quite a fair few times here and there. Um, so what's this? We've got a few details here. So we've got uh, nameplate, which is quite nice. Um, I believe that sort of these aren't um, as the easiest things to fit, though, these, these particular ones. As we can see, so well, the actual nameplates themselves. But then we've also got some um, sort of the crests, if you like, um, if that's what you can call them as well. We've then got, basically, got, you've got to take both of those out, um, so each name place and crest out of the thing. And then you've got to use, fit it separately onto um, like, a, I suppose like, a, like a backing or a mounting or something like that. If, um, again, if you can call it that. Um, so I'm not too sure why when they did these name plates, they couldn't just make them so like all one solid piece like most name plates. So then you can literally just take them out of there and put them on. Um, they obviously did them like this, which is fair enough. Um, I'm rather, I might fit them at some point. Um, it is, I do tend to fit them um, every now and then. I'll end up fitting uh, some, some of the nameplates or details to locos um, as, as time goes on. Uh, but whether I'll do these anytime soon, I'm not too sure. And well, I haven't done them yet in the several months I've had the loco. So I can't see me doing it anytime soon. But it, it's still nice that we got it. It's just a nice feature. Nice to have some proper etched metal nameplates there. Um, and well, I don't know if it came with any other details. I'm, I think it might have done, but I'm not too sure. Um, but if it did come with any, obviously, I'm sure it would have been the usual bits like hoses and electrical cables to go on the ends. Um, but I can't actually remember um, if it actually came, on, it came with anyone I bought it. Um, obviously, then again, if it didn't, then that's fair enough because she's old. So previously, only could have lost them or, to, lost them or whatever. Um, but it's not the end of the world, I suppose. So let's get her out. Uh, not the best packaging in the world, but I suppose it does the job. And obviously, on a local like this, that's not the most detailed in the world. I'm sure it'd be fine. But there we go, and there she is, and she's massive as well, probably one of the biggest locos to exist, I reckon, certainly with the length of these, they are massive, but there we go, and to be honest, yeah, despite her age, she's not too bad, um, but certainly not the best in the world, I think, obviously, I'm sure modern, more modern versions of this do have more features, um, but as she is, uh, she's certainly not terrible by any means, uh, the buffers are sprung, which is a nice, nice modern feature, uh, the couplings are NEM ones, I believe, as well, and we've got a nice um, slimline, small tension lock coupler, um, a standard, which is good. Um, you've got a nice driver in the cab as well, and I believe it is just at one end, so that's usually how it is. Check the other end. No, no driver there, so that's good. I didn't know, sort of my fingerprints them, marks on the side. Um, so, yeah, not too bad there. You've got a proper etched, uh, separately fitted metal handrails by the doors as well, and the doors themselves uh, don't open. Um, they don't look too bad. You got you can see the um, handle there, which has been nicely painted. Um, on the ends, uh, it's not too bad. You have got some lamp hooks, which is good. So I'm sure probably somehow if you wanted to, you could put some maybe root indicator discs on there or something, or some lamps. So whatever you want to do. I suppose the biggest uh, downfall with these, though, um, at least with these old older versions, the original versions, is they don't have any lights. There is no lighting on this loco at all. 
um, which is which is a shame. Um, but again, given their age, and um, maybe understandable. But there, I'm sure there were other locos around this time that, at the very least, um, had headlights. I'm sure there could have been some way they could have at least fitted maybe a headlight um, to the, to each end of this, or tail lights, whatever. Um, I'm sure something could have been done, but well, I suppose that's fair enough at the end of the day. Um, if you wanted to fit some, you probably could do it. Um, I'm not can't remember remember entirely how much room is inside the nose. Um, but I'm sure there's a way you could do it. I'm sure you could get a kit or you could make up a kit yourself and you can fit some. Um, but yeah, as standard, we don't have any, which is a shame. Um, but moving on from that, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's a, again, it's a shame. But it's nice to have some lighting. Um, elsewhere on the Loco, it's not overly bad. You've got um, a proper separately fitted fan underneath the grill there, which looks uh, doesn't look too bad. And you've got some more sort of panel detailing on the roof there. Um, it's all just moulded, but it doesn't look too bad for the exhaust, which looks good. Some more detail at the end as well. I believe this panel here is actually separately fitted. Um, it's it's a tiny bit wonky, um, but um, it doesn't look too bad, which is quite cool. And you've got the um, factory printed uh, nameplate there, which has got a nice sort of shine to it. And um, we've got the BR logo as well. And the number there, D163. Uh, more handrails. And then on the other end of the logo, I'm basically sure it's going to basically be the same as the other end. So yeah, again, you've got the same coupling, more sprung buffers. Um, you have got a little bit of piping detail here. Whether this uh, came fitted from the factory, I'm not too sure. Um, personally, I'd say it's unlikely that it did. Um, I'm pretty sure Batman didn't uh, used to fit a detail like this from the factory. Um, but um, it's not too bad. It's nice that we got it. Um, I'm guessing if it did come separate, it would have come in the detail bag. Um, so it's, we've got, at least we've got a little bit of detail there. It's not too bad. And we've also got the hook there. So maybe somehow you could put like a chain link coupling on there or something. Um, not too sure, but well, at least not, again, at least we got it. If we flip her upside down, we'll have a quick look at the pickup situation. Um, I believe, again, I believe it's just sort of the same sort of standard as most sort of Batman diesels were from this time. Um, so yeah, you can see it there. So it's just, um, these are the two driven axles, um, these two, and they are also the only wheels that pick up as well. So you've got those four wheels there picking up. And then the same on the other bogey, you've got these two driven axles. And then these uh, wheels pick up as well. So you've got eight wheel drive and eight wheel pick up. So not the end of the world. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. And well, as I say that, so I know it's going to be fine because this Loco is incredibly reliable. Haven't had, haven't had any performance issues with it at all. Uh, probably in some cases more reliable than some of my newer models actually as well, which is uh, something to say, I think. Uh, certainly shows the durability and reliability of these older Locos. Uh, but then again, I've also had, I have had my bad experiences as well with uh, this sort of mechanism. Um, I'm not going to go into it, but in short, um, yeah, don't buy the older Batman 66s um, that um, use this sort of pickup arrangement. Again, sort of, well, I think they're all wheel drive, but pickup wise, um, yeah, same amount of pickups as on this Loco, but I've had three of them and all of them were not very reliable. Always cutting out, despite being uh, clean and properly serviced, um, yeah, clean track, clean everything, they still cut out, um, and yeah. <laughs> No amount of fiddling, whatever that I did, um, ever fixed that. So, um, yeah, <laughs> this uh, this um, sort of mechanism, this pickup arrangement, it can be very good, but it can also not be very good. So, yeah, a bit of hit and miss there. Um, but at least on this loco, yeah, I can say that it does work very well, and we'll see that later. And when we get on the track, um, the windows I've just noticed, um, it almost looks like they've got like sort of glue marks on them. I'm not too sure um, if that was from the factory or if the, I don't know if you came like that. I don't remember her coming like that. Um, but then again, I probably wasn't looking at the windows too much when I first got this loco. Um, um, but yeah, it's a bit strange. Um, but hopefully it'll come off, where, whatever it is. I doubt it was there um, when the loco was new, but well, then again, it could have been, you never know. Um, it almost looks like fingerprints. I'm not too sure how they've got there. Um, I think they're on, the, they're on the other side because they don't seem to come off. So yeah, I might have to look into that. Um, but uh, oh well, that's that, I suppose. Um, so yeah, overall... Which is not too bad, um, certainly not too bad. Um, obviously, again, not as good as more modern locos. I'm sure you can agree. Obviously, we get more detail, better, better mechanism, and more features these days on uh, newer locos. But obviously, if you can't buy, well, if you can't afford um, the newer stuff, if you or if you just prefer maybe your older stuff, and you want to get something that's decent but doesn't cost too much, um, I can definitely recommend this. It's definitely um, not too definitely well, certainly for the price that I paid, very good value for money. Um, even the bogey detail there, we haven't talked about it yet, so you can see all the riveting on that. Uh, the speedo, the painted axle boxes, it's not too bad at all. 
she definitely looks the part so she'll definitely um, I'm sure um, on your layout she'll look very good behind uh, when I say behind um, on the front of a rig of coaches or freight whatever you want to use her for um, yeah I'm sure she'll do uh, she'll serve you very well um, so I think we've rambled on enough I think what we need to do now is head up to that out put it on the track and see how she runs okay so here we are back up on the layout once again so we'll just get the loco on hopefully it should be too hard um, there's quite a lot of wheels to get on with this one so let's take our time try and get them on that's the front bogey on i think uh, yes it is and do the other one and there we go i believe we are all ready to go uh, yes we are right that's not too bad then but easier than i thought so there we go all ready to go so she is chipped as i mentioned earlier she didn't come chipped um, but i ended up shipping her um, not too long after I got her in the end. Um, only standard um, 8 pin Hornby decoder that I ended up putting in her because that's well, that's all I had spare at the time. Um, and obviously, well, I'm not going to be reusing this logo too much, so I didn't want to go for anything too fancy. Um, I know obviously Hornby decoders aren't the best, they are pretty naff, um, but it seems to perform very well in this logo, so I think I've gotten away with that one. So let's just select her number, I believe it's this. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> there we go. So let's give her a wiggle and see what happens. Hopefully she's not going to show me up and perform badly now. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's obviously a little bit jerky there at the end, but obviously that is by last the decoder men really. It's not really the logo's fault. So obviously these Hornby decoders, again, not the best performance in the world. Oh, I think the track might be a little bit dirty here, although I did clean it earlier. Um, but she has been sat for a while, so she might do a little bit of a run. But yeah, there we go. Obviously not too bad, I'm sure you can agree. Um, again, I know we have seen better performance in, in, the, in the past, and well, we, obviously we've had locos with, locos with better decoders and better mechanisms. Um, but yeah, certainly not too bad, I think. Um, on our log, um, I can say she does uh, still run very well. Um, and I suppose, as I said earlier, on analog or DCC, um, she does run very, very well. I'm sure with a better decoder, she would run better on DCC than she does at the moment with this decoder. Um, but yeah, oh yeah, overall, I can't really fault her, to be honest. Um, there are better logos out there, again, as I've said earlier. She's not the best. Um, she does show her age in a few areas. But overall, um, she does the job. And I'm sure you'll agree that even despite her age and well, <laughs> the areas where she shows her age and the lack of features and areas, um, I'm sure she'll still be a very good uh, addition to any layout. So I think what we need to do is get her running and we'll really see what a performance is like. So give her some power and off she goes. And we'll go for about half power as normal and we'll see what that's like. So there we go, 50% speed, not too slow, not too fast. And she's running brilliantly, nice and smooth, nice and consistent. No horrible noises coming from her. All we can hear is the wheels going over the track, and obviously there's, there is some motor noise there, um, which again is kind of to be expected at times. But yeah, overall, not too bad, not too bad at all. Well, overall, I think it's safe to say she's definitely adequate, isn't she? She has some decent detail, she runs very well, and she doesn't cost very much either. So she basically ticks all the boxes um, for the most part. Obviously, she's not the best, certainly not the best local in the world. She's got no lights. Her detail in some areas, I suppose, could be better. Uh, her mechanism could be better, she could have more pickups. She can have again more features overall, a better DCC socket maybe. But as she is, she's certainly not too bad. She does the job, and in my opinion, she does the job well. 
there are worse Legos out there, and we have experienced uh, some of them in the past, I'm sure. But yeah, overall, there's not really too much that I can fault her, to be honest. I would certainly say that probably the lack of the lights is the most, uh, sort of, I suppose, most disappointing thing about her. But apart from that, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. If you want one of these, I can definitely recommend them. Obviously, if you do want one that's, uh, well, I suppose better, <laughs> in short, then obviously I would recommend going for newer versions, which I'm pretty sure Batman have done. I'm not too sure when Batman last released the Class 46, though. And um, obviously, you can very likely that that logo being newer, and it'll have, probably have lights. It'll have a 21 pin DTC socket, probably. It'll have, probably have all wheel pickup, all wheel drive, uh, maybe in some better detail in areas as well. Yeah, even even though she's old, she's certainly not so out of the picture. Plenty of years of life left in her, I'm pretty sure. Well, certainly, certainly no signs of uh, um, dying anytime soon. Most is silky smooth. No, again, no horrible noises. Not running uh, horribly either. Yeah, overall, I can recommend it. If you want one of these, I do work around getting one. And now let's have some ratings for the Backman BR Green Class 46. So on the diesel on this locomotive, I probably have been a little bit harsh here, but obviously then again, your opinion may vary. I've given her a 7 out of 10 because overall she does have some nice features here and there. We have got some nice detail um, in various places on the loco and the bogey detail I think is probably one of the main areas. We've got some nice uh, riveted detail on there on the bogies. You've got these separately fitted uh, metal hammer rails by the doors, lamp hooks on the ends. It's certainly not too bad but then again you, have got, you haven't got any lights on the loco which is a real shame. There are a few areas here and there which I think could be better. The roof is a bit plain so it could have been nice if we had a little bit more detail up there. Um, the body size does look quite plain and plasticky with those grills, so that uh, could be another area where, where she could have been improved. So she, again, she's not the worst uh, in the world, but not the best either. Um, again, I might have been a bit picky here and a bit harsh with the score, but she's not too bad at all. She's not the worst. Um, she still does look very good. Um, again, she does have a few nice details, so not the worst in the world, uh, but I do think that uh, she's not uh, deserving of a much higher score than that. The performance on the Loco, though, absolutely cannot fault it beautiful beautiful runner very smooth very consistent i just can't really can't fault her down really she runs beautifully so there isn't i don't think there's much really more i can say about her beautiful beautiful runner don't think you can really get too much better than that especially on a loco of this age definitely a 10 out of 10. the quality on the loco this is a little bit tricky uh, to sort of choose what to give her for this so i went with 8 out of 10 because while she is built very well she does feel very sturdy in the hands definitely doesn't feel like she's a cheap model um, again, you have got that lack of lighting, which is a quality feature that we haven't got, so, so I've marked her down for that. And then I just feel like, maybe the finish of the Loco, she does look a little bit plasticky. Um, in some areas, she does look a little bit, uh, maybe more, more toy-like. Um, but overall, she's not terrible, uh, certainly by any means, quality-wise. She's, again, she's built very well. She, looks, she doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, definitely not too bad in the world. I suppose the mechanism, maybe you could mark down a little bit uh, for not having um, more pickups than she does. Um, but yeah, overall, not too bad a source, certainly not the worst quality loco in the world. We have seen worse uh, from other manufacturers, so yeah, overall, not overly bad uh, on quality, I think. The value for money, while well, this was going to be 10 out of 10 all along, I'm sure you can agree, £54 for this loco. You can't really get much better than that, so you probably even struggle to find one for that much uh, nowadays. Well, even though I only bought the loco a few months ago, but if you try and find one for that, for that much, it's probably not going to be very easy because I'm sure they would go for a lot more than that normally. So definitely, definitely a 10 out of 10 value for money on her. Definitely got what you pay for. A beautiful big lo diesel locomotive. Yeah, can't complain there. So the, that's an overall score of 8.75 out of 10. Uh, not too bad, I think. Um, again, being an old model that she is and I suppose not having um, the number of features that we're probably normally used to with newer locos. Overall, certainly not too bad there. We're very well deserving. Beautiful locomotive overall.